Was ist der aktuelle Stand der Dinge bei Estate Guru? Es gab ja viele Kreditausfälle und heute besuchen wir mal Projekte wie dieses hier vor Ort und interviewen auch den Chef mit euren Fragen, mit euren kritischen Fragen. Und als erstes haben wir dieses spannende Projekt hier im Stadtkern von Tallinn. Es handelt sich dabei um einen Neubau, wo vorher ein altes Holzhaus stand. Jetzt entstehen hier Luxuswohnungen, wie so oft bei Estate Guru. Und das Interessante ist, dass hier mit einem sehr niedrigen ja, Fremdkapitalhebel gearbeitet wird, da es sich um Familienunternehmen handelt, was ja ungern etwas höhere Risiken eingeht. Ein sehr spannendes Projekt für Investoren, wie ich finde. Danach ging es direkt zu diesem 5 Millionen Euro schweren Projekt, das direkt in der Altstadt von Riga liegt. Hier wird ein Altbau ja saniert. Hier gibt es teilweise noch Bunkeranlagen aus dem Zweiten Weltkrieg, die jetzt in ein Restaurant umgewandelt werden. Extrem spannend. Wir waren hier mit dem Bauherrn vor Ort und der hat uns gezeigt, was er alles hier machen musste, was er beachten musste. Denkmalschutz an jeder Ecke und ich finde, es ist extrem schön geworden. Dieser Herr hier hat mehr als zehn Jahre Erfahrung im Baugeschäft selbst gehabt und ist eben jetzt Entwickler geworden, hat sich rund drei Millionen von den fünf Millionen Euro, die er hier gebraucht hat, geliehen. Sehr spannendes Projekt, wie ich finde. Und hier wird neuer Wohnraum geschaffen und gleichzeitig auch entstehen hier im Erdgeschoss einmal ja ein Geschäftsbereich und dann noch ein kleinerer Geschäftsbereich nebenan für ein Café zum Beispiel. Und dann unten drunter, wie gesagt, das Restaurant. Oben drüber dann im ersten, zweiten und dritten Stock sind Wohnungen, die ja wie Neubauwohnungen aussehen, wirklich äh, top sind und ja eine Spitzenlage haben und auch für Spitzenpreise verkauft werden. Wir stehen hier jetzt vor einem ausgefallenen und wieder eingeholten Projekt. Das wird jetzt ziemlich spannend. Um, Pavel, mm -hmm. when was this project here funded and mm -hmm. uh, when did it default? Uh, this project was funded in uh, June in 2021 and uh, it was defaulted in May 2022. Okay, okay, yeah. right. Also, it was a partial record uh, in the same year when it was defaulted uh, yeah. in August. Uh, it was partially recovered and the story behind that is that uh, actually borrower came to us with the list of potential uh, buyers and uh, ask us to give him additional time to me to, to find the buyer himself so and we wanted some kind of commitment so he paid us uh, 35,000 euros of the principles mm -hmm. and uh, we gave him uh, time until october the same year to find the buyer yeah uh, but as this plan didn't work out uh, we proceeded with the enforcement process and uh, after that in uh, february 2023 Mm. Uh, we sold it and uh, got this loan fully recovered. So it took almost a year from the partial recovery until the full recovery. You gave the borrower a little bit more time and then yeah, yeah. you did it. Even that we gave an additional time of uh, in the amount of few months, it took us uh, less than one year mm. actually to recover. Yeah, that's great. Fully that's recovered great. the loan. And um, did you have to go through a lengthy court process or was it just an auction? How did it go? Uh, there, actually, I wasn't involved there. So, mm. uh, in in this sense, uh, you have to you have to prepare prepare the papers through the court and then go to the auction. So, All in right. this sense, but uh, there was but borrower was really cooperative. So, in this sense, uh, it was cooperation between the state court and the borrower. Okay, interesting. So, one year of a full recovery. We have here this kind of small hotel. Mm -hmm. um, how many bedrooms again? Just a few, right? Six bedrooms in uh, this hotel? No, much more. Much I, more? I, I, much, much more. Uh, I don't remember by my heart, actually, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> okay, but it's a small hotel here and there was uh, some renovation work going on here, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's fully renovated from the inside. Mm. Uh, it is really beautiful and uh, luxury boutique uh, hotel. Okay, yeah. interesting. And now someone uh, else has bought it and uh, some works are going on here. Yeah. So uh, the recovery process work. Would you say this is a usual timeline for your recovery processes? Uh, in average, uh, it usually takes longer time. Mm -hmm. uh, in average, uh, it's more than a year. Mm. Like 1.3 years, something like this? Or how much longer? Uh, if you look at the statistics, uh, you can pick it up uh, by countries or uh, look at the state guru performance uh, as a group. 
mm. and as a group it usually we have average of uh, 18 months right now 18 months so one and a half years yeah yeah okay interesting interesting that you were here so much quicker um, thank you very much for that und ich sitze jetzt mit Michael Stamm, dem CEO von Estate Guru. Er war vorher COO, also Chief Operating Officer, hat viel Ahnung, wie es hier im Detail die letzten Jahre gelaufen ist. Ist jetzt eben aufgestiegen zur höchstmöglichen Position. Und jetzt stelle ich eure kritischen Fragen an ihn. Michael, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, happy to be back. I think we, when was the last time we talked? Uh, I think in the Germany office, uh, just when the Ukraine war started, to be honest. Yeah, and I think we had one podcast in the beginning of the year as well. Yes, we also did that. Yeah. We also did okay. that. That was virtual, but now in person and now yes. also in Tallinn again. Okay. Uh, that was four years ago, but uh, yeah, the city has changed so much. Um, and well, the Estate Guru uh, platform has also changed, um, uh, well, quite a lot. Um, currently, 42% of your outstanding uh, portfolio of loans is um, in default and in recovery, and 6% um, are late. Um, that's, well, bad, and many investors are looking for alternatives right now. What would you say to those people? Yeah, uh, we have said also, and we have chosen to be transparent about this. Uh, this has been one of the things uh, from, from the beginning that we want to Mm -hmm. uh, always talk about and not hide things and also then giving uh, explanation what's going on. I think what we were missing in the beginning of the year as we were really kind of also moving into the new cycle. Last year was a growth cycle for us. We tried to grow and then we saw that as the macroeconomic situation is changing, then uh, we also make adjustment for today's kind of uh, environment. So we also stop kind of expanding. Uh, uh, started to focus on core markets uh, and uh, that meant that uh, we kind of a little bit, I think in the beginning of the year, we also lacked a little bit uh, communication, but this is hopefully something that investors also see today that we have picked up. But coming direct to your question, then uh, yes, we have now risen to the highest uh, default level. So, but for that, there are several reasons. So first of all, to start off is that uh, we need to see what is happening in a more global macroeconomic situation that where we see uh, anyway uh, disruptions in, in stock markets, bond markets, uh, you see the high Euribor inflation uh, markets really tumbling and so on. So, um, so this is yeah definitely affecting also the real estate market and also the performance of loans. We have seen that uh, from, from the last year but also continued from this year. The, increase in prolongations, the sales period for the borrowers is taking uh, more time. However, uh, there's also signs that uh, it's not kind of stopped or uh, there's a big drop in, in real estate prices. There has been just uh, uh, taking more time, some 10 to 20% uh, changes in the market. Uh, again, depending on the asset class. Uh, so all of this uh, plays into that. But if we even more look into it deeper than, than what is affecting this and causing this 42%. And the big factor here is actually our German portfolio. Mm -hmm. So currently, I think the latest is around 90% of our portfolio is now uh, put into default. And for that, there are several reasons. For, for first, it is that we have stopped in the beginning of the year the new origination, meaning that the loans that are performing are step by step being repaid and kind of going out of the portfolio. And as you are not originating more loans, this also means that uh, there aren't actually, uh, th th it can go only, only one way, which means that they can only raise. Secondly, uh, the time to solve uh, German portfolio is, is taking time. And uh, there are several reasons for that. This is the first, first time we are doing it in Germany. Uh, to establish everything. Uh, secondly, the overall process compared to the other markets where we have already a solid track record. Uh, we have been able to solve uh, almost 30 million in, in Baltic plus Finland in our history. Uh, this has shown a really good uh, actual performance even if the loans are defaulted. So, however, in, in German it will take much more uh, longer time. Just example, what I have been given also earlier is that uh, uh, in, in Baltic, you can go to the auction with uh, two months. However, in, in, in Germany, uh, the minimum is, 
is uh, six months. So we now start to see, as we took this ag aggressive approach uh, in the beginning of the year and uh, end of last year, that uh, these loans start to get to the situation that we ca go can go forward with the next steps with our portfolio. So yes, Germany is giving a big, uh, big impact to this 42%. Mm -hmm. But however, that said, there are actually, uh, I would say, business as usual in, in the other markets. Uh, we see portfolio performing in Estonia, where the defaults currently are at uh, 6% uh, level. Uh, we have been in, in, in Baltic and Finland, we have actually been able to recover around, I think, 3 to 4 million in the last four months. So it's kind of, at the same time, uh, we are uh, getting repayments back, uh, we are recovering loans, it's kind of the going as, as usually. Uh, in, in, in Latvia, when we kind of uh, enter, we also saw little peak if on the faults, we kind of adjusted, and now actually in, in recent years we have been able to bring down the defaults to, it was at one point even on 6% level, now it is but increased again, so it's around 10%. However, we see that it's kind of uh, in, in, the, in, in between where we want to be, between 5 and then 10. This is a kind of healthy portfolio for us. In Lithuania, Lithuania is a little bit, again, different situation. We had a, and I think when we did even the last interview and I kind of uh, sent out the annual letter in the beginning of the year, uh, Lithuania was a market where we didn't have actually any, any, any big defaults by that time. Mm -hmm. and, but suddenly after <laughs> the interview, we saw one group actually going into default, which meant that suddenly you have uh, 10 million or even more uh, defaulted. And as the portfolio is not so big, I think it was around uh, 40 to 50 million, it, it gives a big impact. However, what we have now understood that it's a really uh, good asset in the city centers, all of them, uh, again, we just need a little time to solve. Uh, we were quite close uh, actually being able to solve already now, but uh, now it has uh, some juridical uh, aspect which have prolonged this. So in, in, in there you have the case of uh, one borrower group, but there's a high likelihood actually solving these cases. And then the Finland, Again, a little bit different story. They are like much, much bigger deals which have gone into defaults. Uh, solving them takes a little bit longer time compared to the smaller uh, uh, defaults, but we still believe that it's uh, achievable even this year. And actually, the latest news is that uh, today I just finished a call with Finnish country manager that we have been uh, finishing one, uh, one successful auction. So there was even such a big appetite for this property, what we had, that 90 people turned out, uh, and uh, it seems to be that uh, we are able to recover uh, principal plus also additional things. But mm -hmm. again, don't want to go to detail things. In, till we haven't received all the money, uh, things can change. That's so right. to finish, uh, yes, 42 uh, might seem uh, big and we're not happy about we make every day this is a hot topic for us to, to really uh, work on this I see this is the uh, really uh, something where, where we need to show by actions uh, with these actions uh, we hopefully also convince our uh, investors that uh, we can also uh, manage uh, our business outside of Baltic and then Finland mm -hmm. so it's just a matter of time we need to consider the macroeconomical situation and we uh, we have plenty to be actually proud uh, in, in, in our other existing markets. Right, and um, while I grant you that for sure, that you have uh, plenty to be proud of, how will you prevent such a situation from happening again in the future? This is the continuous improvement. Like I said, I gave the Latvian example. Uh, we entered the market, uh, we have our own kind of credit policy, uh, uh, which we have been using in, in, like in previous markets, for example, then you go, you use the same basics, but every market needs a little bit its, its own adjustment. So by the time we started to learn, first of all, uh, we changed our credit uh, approach in, 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 for example, in Latvia, and then we kind of also learned how to most efficiently recover the loans, and then this is kind of a learning process. Mm. 
in Germany, we also expected a little growth in, in, in defaults, but the level we reached uh, was not acceptable. And that's why we made these drastic changes uh, also in, in the market. So learning for, for, for Germany, or if we're going, at one point going to continue, is that, uh, uh, and especially entering into the bigger markets, is that you, we need to go in a much, uh, let's say, uh, cautiously. So mm -hmm. first of all, uh, you enter with uh, smaller amounts, you see maybe you wait longer uh, to see how this uh, portfolio is performing. Uh, we didn't get this experience, I think, in, in other markets because this were, there were so much smaller markets. So in, 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 like I said, in, in Latvia and Lithuania, our portfolios are around 40 to 50 million and same in, in Finland. So, so suddenly you enter the big market and you, and you have so much bigger deals uh, mm -hmm. coming into the table uh, and so much different uh, uh, leads in. So, so yes, uh, one takeaway definitely is that uh, more cautiously build smaller portfolio, see how it responds and make adjustments. Secondly, what we have, for example, done in Finland now is we are now focusing on uh, more on, on smaller deals. So instead of having like 5 million exposure, you have uh, then, uh, for example, uh, for one million exposures, and uh, if something happens one loan, it doesn't have so much big impact on, on our total portfolio, but also on so much big impact on our investors if they have diversified well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a continuous process. We have now we are soon adding this uh, uh, ratings uh, mm -hmm. for borrower ratings. Hopefully, from that we can develop more uh, risk-based uh, pricing for our borrowers, meaning that if you have a good uh, background as a borrower and you have good collateral and you have maybe previous uh, uh, history already with us, you can get better terms in interest wise. But if you if the risk is higher, you also having kind of risk adjusted uh, pricing. So you have higher uh, interest, for example. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, these are some examples what we're doing. But uh, quality uh, is uh, uh, most critical part for us and for our success. This has been our kind of strongest things uh, in, in, in previous times, why mm -hmm. investors came and why they trusted us. And uh, with the next actions, we need to show that uh, this is still the case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, in Germany, um, when I visited in 2021, um, you had a new head of uh, the German, um, well, estate guru, uh, platform, let's say, uh, German country lead, uh, Björn Kornbecher. Um, he basically uh, went to Deutsche Bank because uh, they offered him um, a big amount of money. Um, and uh, how's the situation now that you have uh, put in your people here from Tallinn, from Estonia, into Germany? Mm -hmm. How's the situation with the leadership uh, from you guys coming to Germany right now in Germany? Mm -hmm. What would you say? It's a stable, but uh, also, as I said, it's uh, with a different focus. Mm -hmm. The main focus currently in Germany is to work on a recovery. This is uh, kind of the company-wide uh, highest priority at the moment, uh, which means that we have also allocated extra resources. We have uh, created a separate uh, work group, which is actually working on these cases, uh, working together with German uh, different law offices uh, to find, uh, to create these uh, Mm. solutions to that. So, so the main effort goes there. Uh, uh, so we support it with the HQ and the local uh, team is, is more of kind of also keeping the uh, customer relationship up. So and second part, which we also parallel do is, is again, analyzing and uh, making an adjustment for the future uh, reopening or relaunching of origination. So this means still improving the partnerships improving the, some of the aspects in our uh, processes so so we still I still see that all of the learnings we have uh, uh, gained from Germany that uh, at least uh, the minimum we should do is uh, give it another tribe uh, but uh, with with a new approach mm -hmm. I see and I will scroll down a little bit here in my questions that I have on my laptop. So one of the questions that investors asked me the most when I said I'll be having an interview with you, um, and I know it's not easy to answer, um, but still I would like to hear what you have to say, 
when will the German uh, defaults be recovered? Mm -hmm. um, it's a question uh, I have all, all the time asked and mm -hmm. question to re really hard to give an exact answer. So I know that, uh, as I said, we have a solid track record in all other markets. We know that in other markets it, it has taken around 12 months to be recovered. And uh, even if, you, for example, you need to wait one year more, you have been able to receive a 9% return. So this time you have been waiting is also kind of uh, compensated to you by the 9% return. Mm. However, we don't have any kind of solid track record in, in Germany. What, what I said that there's a already longer processes uh, what uh, might uh, increase the time for that. We have a little bit different uh, economical situation uh, mm -hmm. in, in Europe, in, in Germany. So this all, all might uh, mm, mean that the things will take longer. So what, but what I can see and, 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 and think of is that uh, our aim is to see first smaller recoveries already uh, in, in Q2, uh, quarter two and quarter three. And probably uh, as I also now we start to see, as I said, uh, things getting to the situation that we can take next legal steps, go to the auction or uh, continue selling the claims. So probably uh, the answer, uh, how long it will take, we will see around the uh, end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, because what we are also doing is we are also working of, of uh, s selling the claims. So it might kind of speed up, which is a good thing in Germany as compared to maybe other markets. So there's a really active kind of claim purchasing and uh, selling market and there's a really li liquid one for that. However, uh, we also uh, want to ensure that uh, there's a kind of best outcome uh, sheet for the investors so so with this portfolio so but in in a bad case scenario yeah i think some of the deals uh, or projects might take um, couple of years uh, to be sold but maturity i will say yes this and next year uh, our uh, what we target ourselves is that to to recover half of the portfolio this year mm -hmm. uh, this is like the most positive outcome, uh, what we hope to uh, achieve, and then step by step continue uh, working with the rest uh, upcoming years. If we are able to achieve this uh, uh, half uh, portfolio solve, then, then this gives us uh, also hint that uh, maybe it's time to uh, test out with a new portfolio. And because then we have proven to ourselves and uh, to others that uh, we are able to also uh, make efficient recoveries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand all of that. Um, some people in my community are saying the values of the loan to value uh, were too high. So um, the risk uh, was underestimated uh, in many projects. Um, what would you say to those people? They say, well, one, um, one person, um, I don't know the English word, uh, a professional who is looking at the value of the real estate, um, good achter. Uh, he's looking uh, at the property and uh, he says maybe 500,000 and the next one says ah, more like 700,000. Um, what would you say to those people that the loan to value of many projects was uh, too low uh, on the platform? Mm -hmm. So low LTV is actually good. This means there's a, yeah. a buffer. Uh, if uh, the value is correct. If the value the is correct. So what we have done and uh, first of all uh, our strength in product is that uh, we are setting these collaterals and, and uh, give against the collaterals and uh, uh, the, mac the, the, the maximum what we give is 75 percent in group portfolio average is around 60 percent which means there's a 40 percent buffer what I can say is uh, that in, in Germany uh, when we looked even the current portfolio what is out there uh, it was even lower but why i don't want to say the number is that i agree with you uh, that uh, probably in current circumstances the values have changed and corrected um, and uh, it might not be the case so what we have done and uh, this i have also explained that actually last year we were uh, on a quite final 
phases of, of closing one of the bigger institutional investors for German market. But, but we put it on hold because we knew that uh, we also don't want to maybe go, go aggressively with a uh, growth for portfolio. Uh, so so what, what, but what, what they did was they also had a forensic uh, analysis of our whole portfolio and also we all the revaluations. And by that time when we did the revaluation, uh, there wasn't much big changes. We saw still the strong collateral positions. Uh, now, uh, this year, we have once again all the new uh, valuations. Uh, uh, I think I haven't, we haven't received the final numbers yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, one, once we have it, then, then my, my discussion probably with our risk manager is that can we, can, you, can we give some hints uh, also uh, to our uh, investors? So, so yes, this is a situation currently with this. Okay, okay. Um, and I have a uh, few more questions, but this interview is also uh, going already for a longer time. And I think in your first answer, you, uh, well, answered quite a few of those questions. So um, Germany right now, as uh, one of my last questions, um, came into a recession. Last week we heard the official data, two quarters um, back to back. The growth was negative of the um, German economy. How do you adapt to this? You said you want to give Germany a, a chance again. Will you do it uh, in a recession, maybe even, even in a depression, or will you wait until mm -hmm. uh, the boom is starting again? I still believe that our product is for different uh, market cycles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think current uh, Uh, cycle also shows us. Uh, so what has happened, we, we actually seen, for example, in Baltic, that uh, maybe banks today are even more conservative, they have uh, even more limits for their funding, which means that we are also now getting quotes for, for, from the best players in the markets, that can we kind of free finance, can we do something uh, with you. What has also kind of changed is that thanks to the, and a little bit now this is a market difference in, 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 in for example, in Baltic uh, region, uh, many of the projects have actually floating interest. You have the base plus the uh, Euribor. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not, not so many cases you have the fixed interest. So right. this also means that actually here we can see that uh, the, if you have, a, for example, 5% uh, base and then you have already uh, three or 4% Euribor added, then it, we are getting quite close to the uh, levels what, what actually uh, we were offering also uh, previously. And especially for the development financing, it has been uh, anyway historically higher wherever you take it. Today we are a little bit more cautious also on the development financing. We are looking more into the bridge lending, uh, all of that. So, so, so yes, uh, market plays role, but I think it also creates opportunities, especially mm -hmm. from development sides. There are developers or, or businesses who are thinking of that, okay, uh, I already want to kick off with some of the things because if there is a growth, for example, in next year, I need to start already this year f with the building. And uh, there are still, uh, I was meeting again, one of the Estonian developers last week and he, he, for example, or they, for example, said that for the high end part, there's a, Again, demand stays, there's no changes. So again, uh, this change means that there, they are maybe shifting from kind of one product to another, uh, but uh, there's still activity uh, happening in, in the markets. So I will say yes, that in, in Germany, uh, our main decision point is we need to show the recoveries. Once we have done, then we again, yes, we'll took take consideration the market situation. Uh, but I think with every market you can find something. But our main focus, and I think the product we're today also offering uh, for the investors is, uh, is the Baltic and, and Finland. Uh, and here, uh, again, we are receiving every month throughout this year, we have been receiving around uh, eight to 10 million Uh, repayments back to the platform, which means that we have been able to pay out one to two million uh, fees for our investors. Uh, we have been able to make this recovery, it's four million uh, recovered uh, during the first months. Uh, next ones will be added. So all of this 
kind of shows that uh, business continues. Yes, it's not in the level what it used to be, for example, last year or before that. Uh, but uh, again, we have taken our uh, focus away from expansion and from the new markets. Right, right. Thank you for that. And um, now before we end it, anything else you would like to say to investors? Uh, again, thank you for, for your support. Also being active, communicating. Uh, we are receiving a lot of feedback, but for me, at least this shows that uh, actually our investors care about. Uh, they are ready to uh, say what they think, how we can improve, and this is important because if nobody would say anything, uh, even negative things, then it would mean that uh, they don't care. They seem to be caring, they want that we are able to succeed, and we now need to show by our, by our actions that we can actually uh, come out of this situation. We have done many things to improve the situation, continue to do that. Uh, and maybe one takeaway also uh, for our investors now is that uh, we are one of the first ones now receiving this pan-European uh, crowdfunding license, uh, one of the first in Europe. And this is also a big change uh, for our whole business model and for our investors, because this means that uh, uh, we are now regulated pan-European, we are not anymore locally regulated, which means that this gives extra protection for our investors, so if they have any complaints, concerns, they can always go to the authority and open up these kind of lines. And we have been one of the also really actively actually working on this and giving the feedback and we see that this is also something which will give a positive impact for the whole sector uh, in this region and all around Europe. And, uh, creates more trust in, in, in the business segment and uh, helps it to evol evolve to the next levels. Mm -hmm. Michael Stamm, very uh, much thank you for taking the time to talk, uh, for being so transparent about everything and um, well, see you tomorrow at Finfellas Conference. Das war also Michael Stamm, der Chef von Estate Guru, im Interview mit euren kritischen Fragen. Sag mir deine Meinung dazu jetzt unten in den Kommentaren und klick hier gerne, wenn du zum Erfahrungsbericht kommen willst und erfahren möchtest, auch wie ich hier mehr als 10.000 Euro mittlerweile investiere. Damit wünsche ich dir eine gute Rendite und bis zum nächsten Mal.